weighs 120 pounds. So for some of those, some of our uh, the women here that weighs more than you do, how's that? Was that pretty good? Compliment? That's pretty personal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> each one of those ladies is about 120 pounds. Wow. And the chain is about 1,100 feet long. It's attached to it. 1,100 feet long. And anchors are attached to the chains. Weighs about 30,000 pounds, which is about 15 tons. No, no, no. No, we're stunned. We're stunned with the statistics. <laughs> That's when you know the young lady would take a champagne bottle and break it over the bow and then it would slip into the water. That took place on January 29, 1944. So you can see it's really towards the latter half of World War II. We've got a birthday coming up. Next week is our 69th birthday uh, of that company and also 14th year anniversary of this ship coming here. So next week's pretty important. Um, this ship did see duty during World War II uh, because it was finally commissioned on June 11, 1944. So it did see duty. This is a big ship, really big ship. It's 887 feet 3 inches long. They told me that. That's about three American football fields in length. It's about five feet longer than the world's most famous ship, which was the Titanic. This is five feet longer than the Titanic. It's two inches longer than QE2, Queen Elizabeth II cruise ship. It's about 20 stories high. It's about 108 feet, two inches of beam at its widest place. And that's really important because this ship was meant to be a two ocean tank ship operating in the Atlantic and the Pacific. So why was 108 feet, two inches important? This young lady knows why. Why is 100 feet, 108 feet, two inches long? Wide in the heart. If it had to operate the Pacific and the Atlantic, it had a lot to do with the canal. Yes, and she knew that. Yeah, it was the Panama Canal's locks are 110 feet wide. So if you do your math, that's 11 inches on each side of the ship. When this ship went through the locks of Panama, at times, it's at least by the sailors' accounts, it sounded like 10,000 fingernails scratching on the side of a chalkboard as it would go up and down on in, in the locks. So it just brings shivers. They'd have to repaint the sides of this ship every time it went through the lock. Well, this ship did finally see duty during World War II, and its greatest claim to fame, though, is that on board this ship on September 2nd, 1945, the Japanese Empire surrendered on board this ship. Right. And we're going to go see that in just a minute. We're going to now go look at these monster guns, so follow me and watch us look. 